Hello boys and girls. In this video we are going to talk about a particular kind of semi-rings. Like semi-rings are for example the natural numbers, right? These structures where you have addition and multiplication. And this is motivated by the videos I did last month on Heiting algebras, right? I uh, had these uh, two videos and uh, apart from uh, talking a lot about logic there, I showed you these um, some examples and the, one of them is this example of the free element heighting algebra that we had here. So um, as a small recap, right, the heighting al algebra um, was what is this truth value object. This was one perspective on it. Um, and like propositions, they have um, a multiplication, which we call end or conjunction in the um, addition, which we call disjunction or or. And the Heiting algebra is moreover, apart from being this lattice where you can add and uh, multiply elements, these algebra elements, um, there were also this uh, uh, operation of implication and the Heiting algebra was then characterized by some axioms with this, right? In this video, we are uh, less interested in this binary operation of implication, um, but look at the more broader class of uh, semi-rings, which has additional multiplication like uh, these, these uh, logically motivated algebras. And uh, what do I mean by that in particular? We are going to look at this, this bounded, right? Like this, uh, the, the, this logical heading algebra was, was bounded in the sense that it's a bottom element false and a top element true. And they have certain properties with respect to the algebraic operations. And also these algebraic operations are idempotent, right? If you remember, if you have any proposition P and you say P or P, like this or doesn't do much, um, and you get P back, like P or P is P, P and P is also P. And uh, these extreme elements, false and true, had the property like, you know, false and P is false, uh, false or P is P and they behave like, like special elements in an algebra. And in particular, unlike, for example, in the natural numbers, uh, these bounded um, algebra also have this top element, right? So the top element was here uh, true. And you have, for example, um, true or P, true, the true proposition or any other proposition is together in this logic also again true, right? So you have, unlike in the natural numbers where there's no element, such that if you add uh, something else to it, you get the element back. Uh, here you have the situation. Uh, and uh, I'm going to uh, denote this element, this top element in this context uh, by the name of infinity, right? It behaves like infinity. If you have infinity plus seven, then you get infinity back. And this is the same situation that you have here, like true or some proposition is true again. Okay, and so, um, that's what we are going to do. We are going to like li literally brute force small semi rings with the properties I just talked about. Um, I give you an example. Here is the code that we're going to step through. This is some Python script, very simply written. Uh, I have set it to three elements. Um, and if I execute it, then we get the same structure out that we just saw, right? Um, uh, by the way, of course, the, uh, the this heading algebra, these logical operations are symmetric, like OR and AND is symmetric. Um, and so we are going to look at uh, only commutative uh, semi-rings. Although this is not the biggest uh, like restriction, I could very easily generate this, this script. Um, but then uh, we have to generate much more <laughs> combinations and options, of course. So uh, here you see there are this multiplication table and addition table, like this matrix, right? And given the fact that these operations are symmetric, I actually only need to generate half of it. Uh, given that they are uh, idempotent or idempotent, I'm not sure how you pronounce it. Um, the, the diagonal is also already fixed, right? So for example, zero and zero, zero and zero is zero, true, uh, false and uh, false is, is false, true and, true is 
true and here the middle element if i call it inter indeterminant right uh, m the middle element indeterminant and indeterminant is still in indeterminant so the diagonal is also fixed by the fact that the structure is idempotent and we're just going to look at this uh, idempotent operations um, so what, what is left here right the, the lower half is determined by the upper half the middle is, is, is fixed um, and multiplication like uh, the, the special role of the bottom and top element also already determines a lot of these um, algebraic operations so for example multiplication by zero we want to be zero again so this top row is also already fixed um, and so the only interesting thing in this whole table is really like from this algebraic perspective here is really this like what ought undeterminant and true to be um, and since uh, you know here we, we see this is again undeterminant this reflects that we are looking at um, the semi ring structures where this infinite element the one is at the same time the unit of the of the multiplication so this is then also actually fixed already um, and uh, here with or we have a similar situation it's again symmetric it's idempotent then this column like the, the last column is also fixed by the fact that we said we have this infinite top element um, and then what's interesting maybe is um, just the fact that um, yeah it's, it's not even very interesting in this case right because if this is addition and addition plus zero like that or like does not play a role doesn't change the outcome of this addition it's also not very surprising Okay, and in the same fashion here, for example, I you know I set this to to free, and I I, um, I run the script, and then we get this this thing out, and this is exactly this information, right? I even uh, I even uh, plot the diagonal. I wouldn't even need to. Um, I don't even plot the lower half because it's like the mirrored of the symmetric half by the commutativity of the operation, and then we see these. Uh, this is the, actually the only. Um, semi ring with the properties that fulfills our uh, requirement so for example if i go to four what it does is it actually shows us various ones so it actually brings us three um, possibilities for the structure that we are going to pin down in a second a little bit more so so this is similar right we have now four elements i call them uh, the bottom one is called uh, set for zero the top, top one is called i for infinity this is the the the, the true value if you will in the hiding case or you can don't confuse it with with um don't confuse it with this one right this i is the inf infinite element and it's also going to be the unit of our multiplication but um in the in the middle like in between i i just enumerate the these elements one after the other so this is the first uh one of the other um elements of this semi ring which is not zero or infinite this is another one and then there are various combinations to make the situation come true and as you see a brute force and the throw away everything that's not symmetric and uh, the commutative and not distrib distributive and we get free out and if i go to four uh, five and this is basically already after this uh, the script doesn't even manage to do much so then we get a bunch of them so here we get uh, 12 um, of those that fulfill our um, uh, requirements although I must emphasize this is up to relabeling right because I have the elements one two three in the middle and it might be that if you rename them then the two are similar like isomorphic um, and yeah here we get a bunch of them and even though we go through um, yeah, these are the addition and multiplication tables, basically. So um, he, he went through a bunch. And if I go up to six, right, then he doesn't even manage to pump them out all at once. It just starts to compute those. And then after a while, uh, the first uh, first viable semi rings of this kind uh, show up. Let me just wait for the first one that you can kind of <laughs> can get what you see here. Um, I have then not uh, yet uh, looked at which one of these semi rings are actually, actually hiding algebras. For this one, we would have to uh, 
like in this brute force approach, also look at this implication operation and see if it fulfills the axioms. Um, here I'm off the uh, logic case, I'm more in the algebraic case and have just a basic structure. And these uh, semi rings that I'm going to consider that we are brute forcing here actually correspond one to one with these bounded uh, lattices, not necessarily uh, orderable. Uh -huh. So I have the recording software running. Maybe that's the reason why, that it takes so long. Um, uh, here's the first one. Uh, I think if you turn on the recording software, then this goes a little bit faster. Uh, but yeah, here you see, for example, here we have some six, six element um, structure that fulfills these axioms that I'm going to show you now. Okay. So we are going to look at the commutative, right? The multiplication and addition table is symmetric. Uh, semi rings. Okay, I'm not further defining what a semi ring is here, but uh, it's also this algebraic structure which is abstracted from the natural number. So it's di distributive, and we are we are going to require that it has at least these uh, two elements zero and one, and they are different and zero and and i. Let's rather say. Um, and I is the, the uh, unit element of the multiplication and um, zero annihilates everything by multiplication and so on. Um, and um, moreover, um, so you're going to see the implementation, what it requires. It's basically just distributivity um, and the behavior of the special elements. Um, and uh, we are going to require that this multiplicative identity of the semi ring uh, is infinite, unlike, unlike in the natural numbers, where there is no element with this property. We are just going to look at the finite semi rings that have the property that this multipl multiplicative identity, if you add anything to it, then uh, it's i again, right? You can think of this as the first infinite cardinal, and if you add 7 to the first infinite cardinal, then you still have something of size infinity. Um, or in our logic speak, um, true or any proposition is still tr the true proposition. Yeah, this also then, this property actually then already implies the this uh, idempotent feature of the addition actually. Uh, okay, and moreover, we are going to require this, this um, uh, this property, the idempotent property of the multiplication, which is also very far away from the behavior of the semi ring of natural numbers, right? So, of course, the natural number one and the natural number zero, if you square them, give uh, one respective is zero. But if you take 19 and 19 squared, it's definitely more than 19 and, or different than 19. And so, this is different from what we have in the. This, Net numerical algebraic structures, at least without mod, but um, uh, in this logic case, in the in the lattice case, with joins and meets have this property, right? So again, these are like lattice uh, properties, and indeed, what we characterize here is this are these bounded lattices. Um, yeah, distributive, of course. This is the same ring property. Um, Okay, and so yeah, our approach will be that I generate all the combinations of the in-between elements and uh, I generate basically all the multiplication tables. Um, apart from the fact that, uh, like for example, we already know that zero times anything is uh, zero, so I'm not going to generate the options for multiplication by zero. This is already fixed, but everything that is not obviously um, determined by the axioms we are just brute forcing and then we're looking, hey, is this actually associative? Is this actually distributive? Right, the associativity is the other property of semi rings that I didn't mention, but okay. Um, associativity is uh, so common that um, it's not, uh, not too surprising that I forgot to mention, but uh, just for the fun of it, um, to mention some non-distributive operations, uh, I think the best one, the best example are Lie brackets which are naturally occurring and everywhere needed in physics, for example, but are not associative. And also the game of tic-tac-toe where the winner uh, goes to the next level uh, is also not an associative game. <laughs> Fun fact. Um, 
Okay, so uh, I'm not going to go into these details of the examples because I uh, already like I want to cut down with time. But suffice to say, um, max and min, like the max operation, right? Take the max of seven and nine, return nine. These operations lend themselves to the semi rings that we <clears throat> talked about. For example, max is obviously symmetric, and and uh, if you have a maximum element, then okay, this works out. And also, like if you have uh, a semi ring, then you can also always complete it to an actual ring by joining like imaginative elements. This is the same as passing from the natural numbers to the integers you add the negative elements you can always do that and also you can also like given a semi ring or hemi ring yeah, like even if it doesn't have a, a multiple multiplicative identity um, you can look at the power set on this and in terms of this define operations and there are some algebraic semi rings with union and these kind of things okay so I, I make some comments here you can click pause and read this um, and also, uh, there's a, a a book which is dedicated to semi rings called um, "Semi Rings and Their Applications" or something like that from the '90s, which covers this. Okay, so so what is our approach be going to be? Right, I, I code up some very simple Python function. Let me spoil you a little bit. Um, and at the core, I'm using the um, this Python library product, which generates just uh, the all, all, all possible combinations and then we are going to cut out from that right I have implemented this function in a previous video um, like for example previously I did this video how to plot all the functions and there I implement myself the same function essentially that you see here even a little bit more general although the Python library function is faster of course and then I have videos like, for example, there's one video that I have called How to Write All the Books. Um, where is it? Yeah, here. Uh, in, in these sorts of videos, uh, the, um, I implement these sort of functions where you like to take a, a, a alphabet and you generate all combinations of words with this alphabet. And this is also what, what this thing here does. So... Um, I might uh, I might show you this. So, for example, if, if like like if we do exit here to just uh, break out and and just show you what this does, this specs print took. Okay, uh, then for example, um, if we go down to four, right? There are several uh, like elements in the multiplication table that are left over that are needed to to be checked if they're amount to a distributive and associative operation and so on. And so if I take this and, and run it, right, then you see, oh, um, in this case, there are like this, this, uh, this list of, of uh, four combinations with just, with just one element that is not already determined. If I go up to five, it's maybe a little bit more interesting, then there are, um, you know, just a few um, elements left open. These, these are re represented by the outcomes of the uh, in-between numbers. Um, and I, I go down through the list, like these are probably going to be this 125 um, options and then checking whether or not they fulfill the axioms that I just described, right? So if I go and comment this out again, or delete this, this. And run is yeah, these are these hundred these options and uh, we just uh, like generate these multiplication tables and check whether or not they fulfill the properties okay so with that said this is the action plan this is um, what I do here uh, I generate this and then I check if, if they are associative and distributive Let, let's have a quick look uh, on, on these functions just so you if you want to do something along similar lines hey even if you maybe want to generalize this and find the hiding algebras among these, right? You have to code up the way of uh, looking if whether or not this implication operation can be defined and so on and so forth. Then have a go at it. Uh, and so I just described to you now this, um, this the, the short script. 
Okay, so um, firstly, um, I, there, I I define this function called tri for triangular or whatnot that I, um, like, that I I'm not sure if there's a standard name. I just needed the amount of um, of uh, uh, diagonal elements. So, for example, for this operation, right, multiplication, um, with like with set is already fixed. Everything times zero is zero. Multiplication with the maximal unit element is always itself. The diagonal is also fixed by the fact that we ha have an independent operation. And so, for example, for the multiplication here, there are like these elements left. This, this, and this. And if you look at another example here, this, this, and this. So, as you see here, I, ha I have to cut down from, from this, from looking at the five, like n equals five, to however ele many elements are there. And obviously, I need this this uh, this function like to to count how many elements are free in this uh, matrix table. Like uh, if this goes up to um, to to five, like this this is a five times five. Then actually, I don't need uh, the lower half of it. So you know, I can take f uh, five times five minus the diagonal minus five divided by two. Um, and then I don't even need uh, these elements and so on and so forth. You, you see, I need this this uh, staircase in the middle. So one plus two. And if this would if this would be bigger than you know, one plus two plus three plus four and so on, this would be one, three, six, ten. I need this function anyway, right? And uh, you might know from like the most basic uh, inductive proof combinatorics that if you add natural numbers, then you have uh, this number times number plus one divided by two. This is just this the counting of uh, this this staircase, the, the number of elements. So I need this a, a bunch of times, um, and and then you know I will brute force all these combinations, all this this the, the, the missing staircase here, and this I will do the same thing for addition and multiplication. So two times, um, and uh, so for this I. Um, I need this in the staircase form. So for example, if I know that I have um, four elements, like, uh, you know, then, then uh, I need one, two, three, add them up, and then uh, have one, two, three, four, add them up, have 10 elements, or what, whatever this is. And then I have to uh, like unflatten them into the staircase right here. So here is like, Okay, this, uh, this is too small for, for this example that I'm giving here, but basically uh, like uh, going from the list of 10 elements to this sort of uh, diagonal matrix, just upper. So I have this, this um, unflattened function going from this thing to this thing. And I thought about it for like five minutes, how this works in a, in a concise Python way. And I came up with this. I'm not going to explain this, this code, but it's just basically like doing a for loop and, and putting this into the, in the, into the right uh, into, into the right form, right? And I call this unflatten. Um, okay, so this is the boring part. Uh, this is just utilities. But uh, now I define the, this addition function and I will actually define, do the same with the multiplication function. So this is going to be a function that takes a specification in this form, um, or in this form even, um, and returns the output of the multiplication by just looking up where the element is in the multiplication table, right? This function is going to return a function add that takes two elements and looks up in the multiplication table what comes out and returns the element. This is literally the function from the multiplication table. And I make use of the fact that is that I have a symmetric multiplication table. So for example, the first thing that I do here is that if these are input and you know, my, my in-between elements are going to be, um, as you see here, like they're going to be labeled from zero and then one, two, three, and then the, the maximum element in this guise is actually uh, the four. Um, and I'm just plotting the, these here where the row index is smaller than the column index. And if somebody inputs into the add function, for example, if somebody inputs x and y uh, for three and 
two, right? Then it says, hey, this is actually like in the wrong order with respect to the symbols. And uh, it's going to flip it around and say, oh, this is the same return value as, uh, what did I say, two, like three and two is going to uh, match to two and three. And then, so what I do here is doing exactly that. So if they come in the wrong order, and the, or the order is just my, the, the order of my symbols, like the, just the order of the inputs, which are have this natural order, like because I use natural numbers as my symbols. Um, and flip this around and just return this. Okay, and um, so since this is addition, right, I know that that um, the, the, the function is idempotent, so whatever, uh, if x and y is the same thing, then I can just return y or also x, it doesn't matter, right? If these are the same, I can just return this thing because the function is idempotent. If x happens to be zero, um, then since the zero and addition uh, does nothing, I can just return y as well. And if y is infinity, then I can also return y because infinity and in addition like, eats up everything, like by this axiom here. Okay, so this like does most of the cases and if none of those apply, right? If we if none of these special cases apply, then we are here in the middle. And then actually look up to unflatten this this back, uh, and then actually look up, and then you, you can think with row and column exactly um, where you have to look, like right. So for example, if this is if this is the second entry and this is the first entry, like if I pass if I pass um, uh, row index x one column index y2, then I would want to have this element, but since my specification is just ha is just having the important return values, I actually have to subtract some values, right? Because my, my, my matrix is not actually a, a, it's a, not actually a full matrix, but I have like uh, only the important part that is not already covered by, uh, by this. And this is like, so you can think about this for a second. Okay, uh, or here. Okay, and then uh, multiplication, funny enough, because our algebraic structure that we look at is so so dual in a way, so symmetric, because the, the infinity and zero is so close to each other with their defining properties. As you can see, the multiplication actually is basically the same thing, except here we return uh, x, right? This is all, you can think about this like, for example, if y is uh, the inf infinite element, the infinite element in our structures at the same time, the multiplicative one, well, then you can just return the x. Um, okay, and uh, even easier to implement is then like associative and distributive, right? Associative means that this thing is this thing, like for whatever f is. So this is the defini definition of associative. And so I, I uh, this is the function that tests if a function is associative. Just for all elements, Right, we have n fixed. We look at all these elements. We need to, to check associativity. We need three different elements, and we do this for all possible combinations. Um, and if there, if any of those is not uh, true, then the whole thing is not associative. Otherwise, return true. And similar with uh, distributive. Right, D distributive is a property of uh, two functions together, and this is exactly the implementation of distributive. Right, this. This uh, G uh, can be pulled into this F. And this is what it means to be a distributive. That's how it goes. Um, yeah, and then um, there are some other properties that I like. I, I wrote scripts just to test these things. So there's this property of uh, being uh, strongly infinite. Uh, like if, if given the multiplication tables, uh, like test the behavior of, of one for um, one is infinite. Um, but uh, for the sake of time, I will not explain the special properties that that are going beyond um, what um, I want in my uh, table above. And then also, um, there is uh, if you have a lattice, then you can always like if you have this, even if you have just the same ring, then you can define. Uh, then there's a candidate for an order, for, namely. If uh, the addition has this property, like if the addition is such that um, that x plus y is y, 
right? If this is a property, then you can say with respect to this property, these elements are ordered, and then you say then you say uh, x is smaller than y, smaller equals to y, right? This is the case, for example, with with our um, bounded lattice, right? The top element, for example, uh, is like if you is infinite. If you add anything to it, then um, you still get infinite. And so it, this top element has the property that whatever uh, x to, you add to it, um, you have still have the infinite element. And this it can be then expressed to say that this is the top element. This is an, a, a, the definition of, of an order, if you will. And uh, then it turns out if you have this this definition of order is actually then the same thing as if the if the semi ring is distributive, then, it's, then this order is always the same order as when you define it like that. If you say x times y equals x, then it means x is smaller than y. And uh, the, the, the example to give here is also the multiplication with zero, right? Uh, multi multiplication with zero always gives zero, and this kind of characterizes how how small um, uh, zero is. Um, okay, and so. Um, I also just test this order and 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 check whether or not the 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 multiplication table, def which defines additional multiplication, which in turn defines an order, if you will, like that, potentially, this is a candidate for an order, whether or not this order matches with the order I impose a priori in a way by using these ordered symbols, right? I use the symbols zero, one, two, three up until n, my n minus 1, and they have a, an order induced by the natural numbers, which that has nothing to do, this order of the natural numbers has nothing to do with this finite lattice order, but I check whether or not this is actually in correspondence, and then I say, hey, this uh, this this structure that you gave me there, um, together with the labels for the elements, have like an order that corresponds actually already to the labels. Okay, this is, a, this is another this sort of feature that you can test. Um, but it's not super relevant. Um, so I think here, for example, I think it pops up once here. This order, for example, is is actually already ordered with respect with respect to to this definition here. If you take this as definition, or you know, in equivalent, equivalently this this, this definition, then this multiplication table for an um, addition table actually defines. Uh, an order which is such that actually, for example, the, the, the symbol 2 is actually smaller than the symbol 3 with respect also with this order. Okay, um, Okay. then some some uh, here convenience functions, for example, right? I, I, uh, the 0 and n minus 1, right? I define this i, this maximal element here is n minus 1. So, for example, here. This goes up to four, like four, right? This is the five, five times five table. The biggest element is four, and I just print it as i. This is this cast function. This is just for show. And similarly, here is the function that ma that draws this multiplication table. I'm not going to go into detail. This is just a function that draws this nice command line output. Okay, and then. Uh, the run function, the test, the actual run function here is what you would expect. So, for example, I generate all these specs, all these specifications, right? Um, with this tree function that I uh, showed you at the beginning. And then I, I just go through all the specification. I make the add function. Um, I show is the add function associative. If no, then uh, this is out of the question. It's already like broken. Uh, if yes, then go through all the multiplications check whether they are associative, then check whether additional multiplication together is distributive. And if so, we have found uh, like a candidate and we have found a candidate for a heading algebra if you want. Uh, raise a counter, I pretty printed, this is what you see here. I test the order, um, if it's ordered with the respect to this order defined with the, with the semi ring, then print order and that's it. <laughs> and that, that that's that's how you, how you can do it. If you want, you can take this, maybe find out a little bit more about hiding algebras. Of course, this was the easy part in a way, um, and this also not not efficient. You know, if you want, I would be interested. If you have your own language and and redo that, um, make a test. How much faster you can get? Because this is really bad. Like if I put it to to seven, then basically it does nothing anymore because it's so inefficient. But on the other hand, I also like. 
it is also like a priori inefficient in the way that I here I demand of him that he generates the list of all specifications up front and casts it to a list. You know, the, the output of prod, prod is actually should be an, an iterable. So just from refactoring this, maybe you can make this code a bit, little bit faster. I would like that. So that's your homework. <laughs> um, okay. Um, so if you commented out, I, I, I written some other convenience functions. So here's the output from, did you see for, no, for n equals five, where I only plot um, the interesting parts, right? Only the centerpieces, this thing. Um, and then I ordered it a little bit, you know, I, I wanted to look at it. I wanted to see here, are there any isomorphic structures in there? I didn't, I think I didn't find any. Um, because I said, you know, because I use these labels, everything is just up to isomorphism. It might be that you can change the labels and you get the same thing. But I think that this, this didn't really happen here anymore. I have the feeling that the bigger your, the structures get and more complicated, the less likely it is that they are isomorphic. Uh, but that is just a hunch. I'm not sure if that's true. Um, and here are some examples, right? So if you want, you can comment these things in. Um, and I've written this test function that you also just saw, and then it will tell you whether or not these specs are making for. Here I'm just testing explicitly. Is it associative addition, associative multiplication, and distributive operation? Um, and this is ordered. And for example, for these cases, it was true. But uh, likely, if I just change anything here, like if I go from one to two here, then this will cease to be one of these nice semi rings as I defined them. Then, okay, so I played around a little bit more with these examples, but I guess it's unnecessary. It's, uh, it's more or less straightforward. Um, yeah, uh, I might be motivated to make some more videos on more like going in the algebraic direction. Maybe I eventually come back to quaternions, uh, quaternions as well. Um, uh, write me in, in the comments what's your favorite semi ring, I guess. Um, or uh, you know what I would uh, what I would like to to see is whether some basic number theoretical problems can be cast in some some abstract uh, semi ring language. What I would really like to see is like you know, number theory on its own is a little bit daunting, and and for some reason maybe they become more appealing if you abstract the right uh, notions away. And I have the feeling maybe there are some operations that have not been found out yet that if you axiomatize uh, those particular operations, then some part of number theory or combinatorics might be a little less daunting. I might be very wrong about that, but um, I have been looking into semi rings uh, like a year before already, I remember when I was looking at um, automata, automata theory and, and uh, like star operations and um, I will, uh, maybe I go in this direction a little bit. Okay, so uh, I hope you liked it and I wish you a pleasant evening.